Go on then, Watson, what have we just done? We have just been to pick up our little double glazed unit for the door from a local, um, there's a bloody great stain on that. So what we'll do is we'll just make sure that my measuring is uh, up to scratch. Perfect. Such a shame we're having to lose these grills, isn't it? Such a sh crying shame. But what can you do? It's what we've got to do. Let's machine. It's like a shitty TV. <laughs> Eat that stain guy. First bit post through the letterbox. First time on there as well, look at that. Bangy, bangy, boom, bang. Um, what we're gonna do is, because we're just gonna cut through it here with the thing, that'll mean that this section will pop out that way. We'll then trim all these off, tidy it up, re-black it, fit the window. So, um, we'll do that. I think we'll use some of that tape, actually, around here. And then I'm gonna silicon around this. It's clear silicon around that and around here. Silicon, just as a little interesting thing, this stuff here doesn't like silicon. So a lot of people today silicon these units in. Seems like a really good idea, doesn't it? Sick them in. However, the silicon rots this and it means that the double glazed units fail far quicker than if you use the fitting tape. And I think, in a manner of speaking, using the fitting tape is a cleaner proposition anyway. So, we're gonna pop that somewhere safe. You know what we're like with our dropsies. You are, you cack handy oh, goo. Yeah. Oh, what, what, me? It's just me. Oh, is it just, just you me? dropping stuff? Yeah, it is me. These are such a complicated, stupid way of fitting something. This is a classic example of whoever, whatever company makes these has no concept of how they're fitted or the difficulties in fitting something. Look at what we've had to do there. It's taken us nearly an hour to just cut that aperture. Now I've seen these done where they're absolutely disgraceful and whoever's done them should be bloody ashamed of themselves. But the only way I can get them nice and neat and looking really good is how you saw us do it. So now to add insult to injury, we've got a drill through from the back to hit that, you know, we've got like less than 15 mil there. We've got to drill through it to hit this screw thread. It's pathetic, it's pointless, it's never gonna work. So what we're gonna do to be in keeping is we're gonna drill from the back out, through the front, widen that hole, bang, copper rivet in there. We will epoxy those copper rivets in because that's, that's gonna be kind of touched and moved and whatnot, so yeah. Getting an idea of what this thing's gonna look like though, aren't we? I think we're gonna to have to do another bit of a finish on that though. There we go. Looking good. Okay, so what are we gonna do first? Let's uh, let's go to town on the grill. Protecty, protecty. Okay. Thank you. 
Scutcheon. Done. So let's just have a little look what we might think. Do you think that'll work? Black and chrome? It's not chrome. Uh, oh. Black and black and this. Black and copper? Yeah, it should work, shouldn't it? I did that on purpose. It's to get all the... It's to get all the... No, I didn't. I dropped it. Turning into shampoo. <laughs> F***ing shampoo. <laughs> Get over here, Mark. Be a part of this. Oh, this fun stuff. So we're just going to widen those and drill through the front. Into the MDF. We're just going to put a little cheeky Chamfer on there, just because we're professionals. Just because we're professionals. God, yeah. Oh, I had a funny dream the other day. Go on then. I kind of was dreaming that, we, we, like, a group of us were staying somewhere because it wasn't. I wasn't at home. I was at home. Of course, I was. I was at home in bed. Somebody was creeping up on the bed, and this is where it sounds spooky, but I wasn't scared by it. It was just like, oh, I can see you creeping up on me. It came even closer, and I was like, I can see you coming closer. Well, you're just going to get a punch in the face. So what I did is just, Rah! and punched out. And I basically punched Jen right in the boob in the middle of the night. She's been so good about it, and I, I've kind of explained. I said, well, I was having this waking dream. Oh, that... that's the story you're telling folk, yeah? <laughs> you know, I'm being honest here. No, she's been so good about it, and I've... I felt like a total turd. So you've seen us doing this before. We take our copper rivet and we just texture. I'm aiming round the edge and then across the middle. There we go, and that's one. Oh, never had that before. That's two. And so let's have a little look at that. That's better, isn't it? There we go. Let's go and get this fitted then. Let's go and fit the this thing. The letterbox. Yeah, I should really put a spray of paint on that, shouldn't I? Underneath. We're gonna have to wait now to let the door. Yeah. Oh. Then he's painted his hands. Yeah. Oh dear. Well, if we're gonna wait for that to dry, let's just paint those holes. So what's this you're using? This is two-part automotive, um, or two-part filler. So it's a styrene-based two-part filler. Um, again, this stuff, I buy it because, I'm just putting the lid back on. I buy it because it, um, it doesn't react with any of my finishes that I use. So it's the ones that morals, that's the hardener. It's the one that essentially the company I use for all my wood finishes, they recommend because it doesn't react with any of their products. And it's black, which, strangely, for oak, works a treat. Uh, what we're going to do, we're just going to fill you up. Doesn't matter if we... We're a bit messy. We haven't got much space to work in. Mm. 
You've mixed up an awful lot of that. I have mixed up an awful lot of that, Mark. <laughs> Look at all this that you're going to waste. Hey, don't be telling people. I'm all mo I'm meant to be about the frugal owl. Frugy owl. Yeah. Not wasteful, sweet cheeks, Watson. Too sloppy. So they are going to need epoxy. What do you think? That works for me. Matches, doesn't it? Yep. Right, now something that I wanted to kind of explain, so I'm just going to pop this out. We've made this door at essentially 45 mil thick. Why have we done that? The, 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 the oak that we've bought has been 55 mil stock, so essentially it'll finish nice and neatly at somewhere around 50 mil. The jam that this door's going into is 35 mil. So essentially what we've got is an oversized door for the jam. Now, it seems a shame to have just basically turned 10 mil of solid oak into sawdust. And also the whole point of this door is it's got to feel heavy and, you know, I tell you what, when this door slams, people are gonna know about it. Um, so it's got that robustness and all of that to make it work. But what have we got to do? It has caused us some problems. And I'll just try and explain what I mean by this. So essentially this width here is 45 mil. I won't put a tape measure on it because we know it's that. Um, our jam is 35 mil. So what it means is that our hinge is pretty much gonna fill up the entire jam. So our hinge needs to be positioned quite close to the front of the door. What that means is we're using bearing hinges for this and I don't have an example of them here which is a real shame because I'll show you what I mean. What we need to do is we need our bearing which is like a barrel which is about half an inch kind of diameter on the back of the hinge. We need that to sit nice and neatly. So what do we do? How do we deal with that little issue? Well, what we do, or the idea I've had, is we're going to take this 10 mil back and 10 mil down with a router and take a look essentially with a bearing cutter all the way along here and then refinish it. That takes the edge of our door down to 35 mil, gets rid of all of our problems for hanging the hinges. How would you do that otherwise? Well, because we're trying to do as much work here as we can, um, we're going to take that the full length. You won't notice it when the door's in position, it won't, it won't look funny. Um, and it'll look neater than if I chop the hinge bearing into this wood with a chisel. And on site, we won't have the ability to refinish this. So if we do it my way now, we can get a really nice uniform finish and it should all look good. If we leave it and do it on site, the finish is going to be compromised. So let's try and go for the best finish by taking that route out along the edge. That's what I think. Powerful. Powerful tutelage. Yeah, I just don't know though. I'm trying to make sure I'm making the right decision here. Because I've never done this before, but the idea is, and I had it, I've got it written in that thing, that we make this door at 45 mil right from the offset. Yeah, that'll be fine. Oh. Do we do that? Or do we just take a radius cutter, cut round there with a nice radius? Then we're not having to do any more fabricating. Because that lid's getting in the way, isn't it, on the side? So we put a frame around it, yeah, and also it's all, it's all starting to get very busy. You know, this is the problem. When we first started this project, it wasn't going to have a letterbox. And then the client decided they wanted a letterbox, and that's absolutely fine. It's just a case of there's a lot going on on this door already with all the iron work and all of that that we start clarting it up again and it just starts getting busy and dare I say it kind of a little bit silly looking. So it's got a bit more detail than just a radius, it's a molder cut, molding cutter. Have you got anything that looks like your balls, Mark? Except your balls, of course. Stuff that looks like balls! Afraid not. No, me neither. 
And too busy for balls. <laughs> too busy for balls. Let's just get all this set up. Okay. Jeez. We're on the right side of the door. Yeah, let's do this. Bolts. What do you think? Not entirely convinced myself. Okay, flame, flame, flame. Plug me in home slice. Yeah, I thought it needed burning again. We're going to be chasing this around the door. further we go the further it goes let's just tidy that up I suppose this is where a stain would actually uh, <laughs> would actually be a good thing <laughs> that is roughly where that goes except goes that way. Can we, if we do that, get our glass in? No, we can't. Okay, just an experiment at this point. Makes you stop and wonder how much goes into a door, doesn't it, Watson? It does, mate. One of our doors, it's a, it's a lot. You'd imagine it was simple and easy, but it is neat. Bling, 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 It's not really bling, bling though, is it? Do you think it's bling? I like you calling it bling. It's door bling. Door bling. Door bling. Door bling. Yeah. Make right. me a coffee. Yeah, come on, <laughs> f*** this, let's get a coffee. <laughs> Bloody all these people out in internet world. They don't have to, they can just get a coffee. <laughs> you have to beg for one. <laughs> So it's a bearing, bearing red louter, barely la la la. <laughs> it's a bearing router bit, whatever. Uh, so we'll just wallop through it. I always like to plug my router in. It works so much bed bed. 
So let's just double check everything. Yes, this is the hinge side. Get my butt in. Okay, so I prefer it this way round. Started trying to route route. Okay. Had a touch of splitting out ahead of the uh, route a bit, so we've come off and just taken that, taken that back. You're all like bitter experience is the only experience that I know and love. <laughs> touching that. You've got a good idea of how we paint things here on Dirty Shed Creations. I mean I'm just I'm not I better not just be talking to myself that camera better be actually be on. I need to I, I, what I've found now is I constantly need to feel that I'm being filmed doing stuff so I'm you know at my best. I suppose this gives us the opportunity to paint around there. So I need to bring a little bit of epoxy for tomorrow. We'll epoxy all of this furniture in. Yeah there's a slight halo around it isn't there but yeah again it wasn't meant to be there so it's kind of an addition. But the problem you've got is it's I always like to get my finish on as the thing's getting finished because it allows you to just cut back through it and we've still got kind of, this is our third layer. It allows us to build up a nice, because this is a catalyzed lacquer, it's almost like an epoxy in a way. It goes on and it sets. And then tomorrow we'll spin it over, we'll get all the rest of the furniture done and we'll do our final, final look at it. Hold it up next to this so we can see what it looks like. Well, there we go. Yeah. Right, we'll get this in there. Vice? Okay, you couldn't chuck us the 
bloody stuff, could you? Thanks, matey. Actually, this is the exposed side. So this is the side you'll see. Right, finish this off put to, to here then. Okay. Okay, Mark. Uh, right, well, there we are. Uh, uh, what a blob of shit on there. So, we're leaving it there for today. Um, once you do these things, kind of like, you know, you end up kind of like, you know, this aperture, we have to go through a refinishing process. We've got, um, that's gone in really nicely. We, we were going to make a metal sleeve for that, but we cut our hole so fine that the metal sleeve that went around it would essentially interfere with the opening of the gate. And we weren't going to remachine that and make another template and remachine it to gain two or three mil. So what we've done is put a nice routed detail around there, and I think it works really well actually. Um, let me just see it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, so yeah, so we've done another round of finishing. So essentially what we've got to do, so tomorrow, very quick day tomorrow, what we're going to do is we're going to drop the glass in, the glazed unit, we're going to fit the sliding gate on the back, everything's piloted, everything's ready to go, so I mean those are jobs that will just be kind of like knocked out really quickly. And then what we'll promise to do tomorrow is we'll get it on a vice in the driveway and we'll let you have a kind of a complete 360 of the door. Yeah, really pleased with the way it's gone, thanks for watching. Don't forget to kind of comment below. We'd really like to, you know, know what you guys think about this one. Um, we've done these before, so I mean, I, I wonder. It'll be interesting to see if there's a conversation about um, if there's a conversation about kind of uh, biscuits and their appropriateness. Right, I'm closing this because it's getting dusty. It's blowing shit everywhere, and it's getting into the finish. Nobody likes shit in their finish. Now it's nice and dark. Sorry, mate. Uh, yeah, so been a really interesting project. You've seen us kind of, well, we're not finished with it yet. So yeah, join us tomorrow and, uh, well, not tomorrow. It'll be when the film comes out. But that's all semantics. It is. Yeah. Bye. To me, it's like, well, I'd soon have my letters outside cold and me nice inside warm. You know, that's just the way it is.